all why, folks? Another S tank for the Germans, the Cunningham Jagdpanzer II, premium tier 8 German tank destroyer. It's even less resembling of an actual S tank than the Kampfpanzer 07HK at tier 9. So large cutaway into the chassis for the gun. Basically large shot trap or automatically pin zone negating half the armor of the slope armor on the actual S tank. So you're not bouncing that many shots from medium tanks or light tanks, but there are slope armor on this vehicle. Just half of the actual amount <laughs> for the vehicle covering the front. So there are parts of well sloped armor like this armoring right here, but there are parts that are not that well sloped like this part, even though it looks kind of thicker on the middle plate. So this might be 110, 120. This plate is supposed to be 50, but if you manage to pin with automatically overmatch large caliber guns, then you probably knock out two crew members. Well, then again, small repair kits or small medical kits will heal everybody. So that would be nice, but it's not aggressive. <laughs> not really. And we already have lots of snipers at tier 8 for the Germans. So comparing this to the regular Kandanang Jagdpanzer 105, it has a larger caliber gun. It's a 110, but less alpha damage, but more DPM. Lower plate is smaller, but... This might be a shot trap onto this plate right here. If it's 50, you could bounce a shot, but it'll go into the mantlet or around the gun. It, it will likely pin, so not exactly best of armoring for frontal combat or assault combat. So don't play this thing like the Kust or Cust, Object Cust, or SU-122V, or the Taurus. That's only on the Russian server, so you're still sniping across the map, but this thing has a lot better DPM than the regular 105 on the Kananang Yakpanzer. So I guess everybody has a S tank now. The Germans have S tank, the Russians have S tank, obviously the Swedish, but the British also have S tanks <laughs> on the Russian server. So we're just missing S tank on the Americans. Possibly the Czechs or Polish, but okay. <laughs> it is a small chassis. It is somewhat flat, so could be very stealthy of a camo. We have to confirm, but it is a chassis running about with a large caliber gun strapped to it, practically. So not the worst looking of vehicles, but the front end is not that great. Not that great at armoring, so you'll likely get pinned, but depends on the actual camo. So if you do get spotted, large engine deck in the back, and that's where you get shot at from artillery. So that would suck, but let's see. Alpha damage is less than the 105, but you have better DPM, a lot better DPM than the regular Kananang Jagdpanzer. Penetration is okay. It's not as good as the 105 on the S1 STRV, so it's still workable as a sniper, but you still have to aim for weak spots. Shell velocity is also not as fast, but it's AP round, not APCR for standard. That is siege mode stats, so it should be better while in siege mode, unless they're doing the same stuff for this vehicle in comparison to the Kampfpanzer 07 HK where that vehicle gets better DPM in non-siege mode, but you do get better accuracy in siege mode. Or, I don't know how this thing is. This is a weird S tank. You play this thing like a medium tank, so it gets less DPM in siege mode, but you get better aim time and better accuracy. So, okay, so kind of inverse siege mode, but we'll see how this vehicle will play along, but... You could elevate the gun without turning into siege mode. You do get more gun depression while using the hydropneumatic suspension in the siege mode, but basically normally it's 5 degrees. You could technically run about and play like a pseudo medium tank. Just fixed turret or broken turret medium tank. 
and point the gun towards enemies and blast them. Hopefully kill them, but 50 rounds, not that bad. 3 degrees traverse n limit. Well, it is a socket with a mantlet mount, but you can move the gun about slightly? That's not that bad when you think about it. You don't have to traverse the whole vehicle to turn the gun slightly to adjust to target. That's not that not that bad. Top speed, pretty decent. Horsepower per turn ratio is better than the S1. So this is more mobile of a S tank than the actual S1, but not as fast, I believe, as the actual Kanana Yak Panzer 105. Yeah, this thing has slightly better horsepower per time ratio. 70 km per hour top speed too. So slightly better. But this thing has lots of camo. About the same view range. And armoring and health. Traverse also pretty decent, but let's see, camo is 24%. That is very good. 23, not bad. How much is the S1? Let's see, we have to compare the actual by stats of camo for tier 8 tank destroyers. Mm, 24, so very stealthy. The best one is the UDS-03, but this thing doesn't have the armor to back it up. So if you do get spotted, you'll get, you'll get shot at by light tanks or mediums and you'll get pinned. Whereas this thing could bounce some medium tank guns or light tank guns. Possibly heavy tanks like the Jumbo Pershing, in a sense, but yeah, this thing is pretty stealthy. This thing is even more stealthy, so you'll feel right at home with the actual this with the actual playstyle of an S1 for this vehicle. So it's even faster at the cost of penetration and shell velocity and alpha damage, but. Oh, it's it's a crew of four too. Trains a loader as well. Yeah, camo on this thing is great. View range is about the same as the actual S1. Let's see. Actually better by 10. Oh, give or take, that's still about the same as the Kanada Yak Panzer. Oh, that's the 90mm version. <laughs> Let's see, DPM. Yeah, we're gonna compare it to a turtle or, or Grom. No, not even close. S1 is about 2,500 or so? Or 2,300? No way. 2,300. It's been a while, but this thing has better DPM by 500 or 400 or so. And better mobility at the cost of penetration in Alpha, but we'll have to see the actual. Siege mode accuracy and aim time, but it should be pretty decent. So if you like the S1, this thing will feel right at home, right? Even though it's a larger caliber gun, it's a 110. It deals less damage, but should have more module damage for a bigger caliber gun. Hmm. Not bad, 50 rounds too. Gold shell also not bad. High explosive is high explosive. You only carry like three rounds or five rounds of the high explosive. Not that much. Turning into siege mode is 1.5. Out of is 1.5. Also, is that faster than the actual S1? How much time into siege mode or out of? Did they even show you on this page? Ah, crap. All right, let's see my S1 <laughs> just to compare the actual turning. Mobility rise. Faster going into siege mode. About the same going to travel mode or normal mode. Yeah, this thing is pretty decent. It is very stealthy. This thing is just as stealthy, but better mobility. And better better DPM too. At the cost of penetration. Slightly better view range. What's not to like? The armoring, yeah, armoring is kind of bad. I, uh, I cannot debate that. The armoring could be pretty crap. So you cannot even defeat a medium tank gun, a 90mm medium tank gun, or light tank gun. So armoring is kind of, kind of if, but mm, in its role of a sniper, 
it's pretty decent. And in the mode or in the playstyle of a tier 8, this thing could see frontline. And when you have the mobility to get into sniping positions, large open maps like frontline is pretty good for this vehicle. Traverse is also not that bad too. Camo is great. View range not bad technically for a sniper chassis of a sniper. <laughs> it's a gun on a chassis. So other than the armor, but you're not expecting armor out of an actual S tank, right? Um, well, other than the Russian S tanks or the British S tanks, but yeah, for the German S tank, only the tier 9 has somewhat okay of armor. It's still 50, but you don't have to play it in siege mode. You get better DPM in non siege mode with the 07 HK. So this thing is more like a traditional sniper of a tank destroyer, but yeah, this is one of my favorite. This is no question one of my favorite vehicle in the game. I play this a lot. I play this about 500 battles almost, but yeah, this is a very good credit maker because of the penetration. You don't need to worry about gold shell. You don't need to carry that many gold shell. But the upside to the Kanonan Yak Panzer 2 is you have more DPM. So penetration does get cut. Alpha does get cut, but you fire a lot faster. So more rapid firing of a gun, but I mean Alpha is only 20 less. With better cam I will trade 20 Alpha for better camo and better DPM. I'll give away the penetration and shell velocity. Ah, yeah, that's fine, I guess. But yeah, this is a very stealthy of a body running about with a gun. <laughs> So, eh, I mean, I like the Germans, but German vehicles always get, get super nerfed before release. The Tiger Mouse, the E77, the T-54D actually got slightly buffed before release, but before that, it got nerfed. So, the Kampfpanzer 3 GST term, the Leopard 1 with a weird hunchback of a design, that got nerfed on the super test, so... German vehicles will likely get nerfed, but equipment wise, rammer, binoculars, camouflage nets. With camouflage net, you are practically invisible with a very good crew. You have to get very close to this vehicle to spot it. So with my crew, I have six skills fully trained. <laughs> Originally it was seven skills, but whatever. So all trained camo. And this vehicle, even with camouflage, <laughs> Without food and whatever, uh, with camouflage, it's about 64, 63%. <laughs> I can even tw tweak this even harder with natural cover <laughs> to go to 65. <laughs> so basically, they have to get very, very close to this vehicle. If it's like... 300 meter view range, they have to get to 100 meters to spot you, which is insane. So negating two thirds of their view range is absolutely nuts, right? Two thirds of their view range. If they have like 400 meters of view range, they have to get into like 130 meters of view range of your vehicle to spot you. Not counting the bush, not counting any obstacle in the way. That is crazy. So, yeah, 400 meter view range. You have to get to like 130 meters away from this vehicle to spot it. Without cover, without bushes. And even with, and with bushes, it's even closer, like 50 or even like 70 meters. That is nuts. So I would say binoculars, camouflage net, and rammer. Run away. Run away. Just, you're faster going into siege mode. And about the same as going to travel mode. So just run away when you get spotted and reposition, but yeah, the camo is pretty decent. Field mods, first one is obviously better terrain resistance. So this one is obviously no joke. This one is terrible. Effective hull traverse is practically negated, even though on paper it says better. So better terrain resistance means better effective traverse, even though on paper it's worse. Not really. Accuracy or aim time? Accuracy. Make it even more accurate. So, in siege mode, 
it should have a faster aim time unless they're doing the same stuff with this vehicle like with the 07 HK so 07 HK uh, kind of uh, comp panzer so gets less DPM but gets better aim time better d accuracy that's a weird trade-off it's also slower but yeah DPM gets cut by 1000 <laughs> on the other German S tank. So if they're doing something like this, then uh, I mean, kind of kind of disappointing, right? You're cut into the DPM. Possibly that's the reason why this vehicle already has like 2700 DPM. That would suck if you're doing the same stuff with this thing. Yeah, that would suck. They didn't even post the actual siege mode DPM or siege mode accuracy. They only post the siege mode tilting of the vehicle chassis. Maybe there's no difference. That would be great. That would be great. And accuracy, or not accuracy, just choose the accuracy. And camo, after firing, or view range. After firing camo is, it's okay, but you're negating lots of your camo, basically by firing. 50%. <laughs> so don't expect, yeah, you're being stealthy enough to still keep the camo after firing. So, choose better view range. I would say better view range. It's about 1.5%, but I would say better view range to spot for yourself. And then, obviously, kill the stuff that you spot for yourself. So, better view range. But, on paper, it's what you love about the S1 without the actual armoring part, right? Or shell velocity, penetration part. But you have better DPM and better mobility. And even better camo, slightly, baseline, so... I mean, with a very good crew, it's very hard to spot this thing. So, I'm just gassing this vehicle up, but I love my S1. Would I trade the penetration, the shell velocity, and the armor for better mobility, better DPM, and slightly better camo? I would. I would definitely do that. I mean, this seems like a very decent vehicle as a premium tank to make credits as long as you play this thing reserved like passively you're a sniper you're not aggressive it's not like a strv 103b where you have the cage armor allowing you to bounce and play like, play more like a medium tank right you're not that aggressive you're not like a object cust or coost you're not like a su 122v you're not like a taurus ca it's not that aggressive, but if you love the playstyle of sniping across the map and being very stealthy, then this vehicle is just for you, right? I mean, 450 meters of view range, that gets cut by two-thirds. They have to get into 150 meters away from you without cover to spot you, which is nuts. You already spot them from miles away with your view range and binoculars, so... Camouflage rating is insane if you know how to compound all the factors into one, but yeah, this thing is stealthier than an S1. <laughs> it's not as stealthy as a UDS 03, but granted, I mean, it's fine, I guess. 24%. <laughs> Let's see, this thing doesn't have, it's still kind of stealthy, but yeah. I mean, the S1 is one of the stealthiest tier 8. It's very hard to spot that vehicle. Very hard. And this thing has slightly better by half of a percentage. <laughs> with better DPM. So hopefully they don't do the same stuff with the 07 HK onto this vehicle. Where you get less DPM but better accuracy or aim time in siege mode. But then again, in non-siege mode, the 07 HK has pretty decent enough of accuracy and aim time whereas in the siege mode it gets even better right 0 0.3 to like 0 0.24 accuracy it should have very decent baseline accuracy and aim time if you're going to do the inverse with less dpm so this doesn't look like that way it doesn't have that good of a baseline of a non-siege mode accuracy or non-siege mode aim time so i presume it's the same style as the actual s1 and with that being said this vehicle is like a 7 7.5 i mean s1 
is a very good vehicle. Very good at what it do. Right? It's not supposed to bounce that many shots, but if you want better mobility, if you want slightly better camo with better DPM, this is the vehicle to go to. It has also a bigger caliber gun, even though alpha damage is not as much, cut by 20, it has better module damage. So better shooting at tracks to D-track or MRX, fuel tanks, engine compartment. Yeah, this is like a 7.5. I am so freaking German biased. It's not even funny. <laughs> I love the the Kumpf Panzer 3 GST term. That got nerfed. I love this vehicle. Probably going to get nerfed. <laughs> but what it does is very good. What it can do is bounce the shots, but you're not supposed to. So ignore all the inclination to be aggressive with this vehicle. Like with the actual STRV 103B. And you should be fine, but yeah, it's a 7.5 out of 10. Possibly 8 for me. Possibly. If this thing has the same shell velocity and alpha damage as the S1, that might be an 8 for me, right? It's an AP round, so it has better normalization than the APCR, than the S1, so it's a 7.5 for me. It's very good. But as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. あれが未来に何度でもずっと暗い作っこの間違いだらけの世界の中